All right. So the other thing I also have is an eraser. Remember, I, I was telling you guys that I like to use the, the block erasers. Um, if you have one of these and you notice how this one's kind of getting a little dirty on the sides. Other reason why I like to use these is because you can clean them easily. Um, the way you clean an eraser, whether it's white or whether it's you have one of the pink ones, you just put it on a flat surface like the table and you erase and you see that it starts to clean it up. So it gets all that gunk off of it, right? And sometimes if you have the tables dirty or whatnot, you can all, it will also make your eraser dirty, right? So just erasing whatever surface you're on will help clean it. So keep that in mind. And that also works with the um, regular erasers that are on your pencil. I try and again, use the block as opposed to the pencil eraser. I use the pen, I try and save the pencil eraser for the really small edges or lines. So remember the pencil scale, right? That we drew or wrote last class, right? You don't need to have every single one of those pencils. Um, and remember your HB number two pencil falls in the center of our scale, right? You could use this one to make all the light values and all the dark values, right? You just have, to, it just takes a little bit more effort to do that, all right? Okay, now you can put the Q-tip and the tissue paper to the side for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle and make it into a ball and then we're going to label some things around it, right? Okay, so we're going to put a ball or a circle right here, all right? And remember, don't make a ball with 30 different lines. Make one circle, right? And if it comes out lopsided in one area like it did there, all you do is reshape it. Don't erase it yet, right? and then erase the line you don't want. So go ahead and make a circle and then correct it if you need to, or I should say fix it. So there's my circle that we are now gonna turn into a ball very similar to what we did with the ink. Hold on, let me fix the lopsidedness. And don't make it too dark. I'm making it slightly lighter. You should too. All right, and then the shadow, we're gonna make it look like the light is coming straight down, All right? So the shadow will just be in this general area right here. Right, so the shadow of our ball, if we were to take a circle and smash it, right, or a ball and smash it flat, it would be an oval, remember that? And so that oval doesn't start at the bottom here, it starts up here, goes here. Here's how you know how far out to go. So you kind of just draw a little imaginary line going down here from this edge, and you do the same thing on this edge, and it'll tell you how far out your shadow should go. So this shadow on the left should go this far out. And then on the right hand side, it should go this far out. Okay. For every drawing, when it comes to using your pencil, I always start super light because I will most likely make a mistake. And it's easier to erase a mistake that's light than a erase a mistake that's dark. Remember this over here? Another reason why you do not want to do it too dark is because you will carve into the paper and you will scar the paper, okay? So even if you erase it and you try and draw on top of it, you will still get those lines, all right? So please be aware of that. All right, did everyone draw their circle and their shadow? All right, so now we have the ball for the circle 
of shadow. We're going to do a couple things. We're going to label a few things before we start shading. So I'm going to make a really light oval shape right in here. Don't make it dark. I'm just, you can see, I'm making a little darker so that you guys can see it on your screen. Okay. This is going, this is known or is going to be known as our hot spot. So I'm going to draw a line that points to it. This is known as our hot spot. And in parentheses, I'm going to put highlight. Huh? So this is where the light hits or comes, and this is the brightest spot on our uh, circle, or in this case, it's gonna be our ball, right? So whenever you're shading or looking at an object, look for these hot spots. Sometimes there's more than one, right? If you're drawing a person or a face, there's multiple hot spots. Typically, the brightest part on our faces is right along the nose, right? Sometimes the forehead, and then on the eyes, you typically see two or three reflections depending on how many lights there are in the room when that person was looking at the camera or getting their picture taken, okay? So that's a hot spot, basically a highlight, all right? The next thing we're gonna draw a line to is this part right here. This is going to be our light values. So this, right, hot spot is going to be the brightest, which will be basically the paper, the white of the paper. And then it's going to go into the light values, right? Then down here, we're going to draw another line. And these are... The, this area right here is going to be our medium values. So not super dark and not super light like these up here. Okay. And then the bottom right here are our dark values. And this typically happens with every single object that you're drawing. There's going to be a hot spot, there's going to be a light values, there's going to be medium values, and there's going to be dark values, right? And these vary or depend on the light, right? So if there's a lot of light, there's going to be a lot of hot spots and a lot of light values, right? And maybe less of these. But if the lighting is darker, then you'll have more of these medium, medium values and dark values, okay? And remember, what are we referring to when we say the word value? Not money, but what? What am I referring to when I'm using the word value? Shading, thank you. Shading, this is just a fancy word for saying shading. And also when we're talking about shading, we're talking about light and dark areas, right? And going back and forth between the two. All right, and now here at the bottom, remember when we did the shading with the ink? What did I tell you guys to leave between the shadow and the object? A space, yes, thank you, Kong. A little space, right? So you're gonna leave that little space again. I'm not gonna mark it because I'm running out of space down here, right? And then here, on the shadow, a line coming out of the shadow is obviously the shadow values, which tend to be medium and dark, okay? And I'm gonna put in parentheses, medium and dark. All right, okay. So we have it labeled, we have our light source, where the light is coming from, from the top. We have our hot spot. 
we have where the light values are gonna go, where the medium values are gonna go, where the dark values are gonna go, and then the shadow. So one of the common things that people do when they start drawing or when they start shading, they just go and start putting a bunch of pencil down, right? And so I want you to be careful when you're doing that. Does Beth, do you have a question? Oh, no worries. Okay, so when you're shading, I need you to take your time. If you rush it, you make those mistakes and it's harder to clean up those mistakes. I have a heavy hand. I tend to start down at the bottom, okay? So when you're shading, remember when I talked about um, the colored pencils and how to use them? The goal for the shading in this, in this type of shading, smooth transitions between them, what you wanna do is I like to do little circular motions, okay? so that you don't see which direction my pencil is moving. Because a lot of times when people are shading, they'll just do one direction like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you'll end up seeing those lines, right? So go ahead now and start, uh, start at the bottom and you're just gradually moving up towards that hot spot. Again, little circles here, let me zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing a little better. Okay. When you are shading, it is also a good idea to rotate or spin your pencil around. Because if you don't spin it around, the point of it will start to only um, shave off in one direction and get all kind of lopsided, the point of it, okay? Make sure your pencil is sharpened and that the graphite is not really close to the wood. So like down at the, at the tip of it, because sometimes people get lazy and they'll let it run and the wood starts to creep up on the point. If you do, if you let that happen, you run the risk of scarring or, or carving into your paper. And then again, you won't be able to get rid of that. Okay. So I'm gradually moving up the circle, right? And as I'm moving up, be aware, or I'm being aware of the amount of pressure I'm applying, right? Because what is, what should be happening as we move up the circle? Should it get lighter or darker? Lighter, thank you. Donovan, you can use your mechanical pencil. I have one and let me kind of show you um, some of the things about it. So when you're using a mechanical pencil, the lead on it is super, well, it depends on the type of lead you're using too, but I like to have the bigger lead. So it's a 0.9 and it tends to be more pointy and a little harder in terms of leaving a mark. So when you're using lead pencil, it's a little more difficult to get rid of those lines or blend those lines. I'm not saying you can't use it, but it might be a little more difficult for you to blend and get rid of those lines. Okay, so just be aware of that, Donovan, or anybody else that's using a mechanical pencil. Okay. So making your way up. And just because you've gone over one area doesn't necessarily mean you can't go back and add more. You can always add more pencil and it'll get darker. You just have to be patient and gradual in layering more and putting down more pencil, okay? Now, now that I'm kind of moving up, I'm gonna change how I'm holding my pencil to cover a little bit more ground, okay? So we typically hold our pencil like this, right? When we write, this allows you to have the most control when you're writing and when you're drawing as well. Now, when you're shading, especially when you're going to maybe starting to move to a bigger area and also um, ease up on the pressure, I like to change how I hold my pencil and I hold it like this, right? So I hold it like this because A, this allows me to cover a little more ground, B, it doesn't let me put a lot of pressure down onto the paper, 
It prevents me from doing that. And so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using the side of the pencil a little bit more without using or rubbing the wood onto the paper, right? And so this will allow me to cover a little more ground because I think I drew the circle a little too big. And I'm still moving my pencil in a circular manner. And my pencil isn't flat on the paper like this. It's at an angle, okay? So be aware of that. And don't worry, we'll, we'll get to the Q-tip and the tissue paper in a minute. We need to lay down the pencil first. Yeah, I did my circle a little too big. So I'm getting into the medium values now. And I'm gonna start to ease up on the pressure that I'm putting on the pencil. If you're noticing that you're moving your pencil in a specific direction, like you kind of see mine right now, right? Because I'm making the circles in a kind of horizontal fashion. I'm going to move or rotate my pencil and change the direction so that it lays on top of those other ones that I drew and blends them a little better, okay? Again, I'm moving up the circle, about to get into the lighter values. And don't worry about this line that I have right now, I'm gonna get rid of that. Right now, my ball or my circle doesn't necessarily look like one. Right now it still looks flat, but don't worry. It's gonna work out, okay. So if we had the other pencils, I mean, I have them, but you guys don't. So that's why I'm not using the other ones because I wanna make sure that I'm only using what you guys have available to you, okay. Again, this goes back to my idea of you don't need to have the nicest things or the nicest materials to make decent looking art, okay? Yes, it is a little more difficult when you don't have the quote unquote nicer materials, but you don't need them. All right, now I'm super getting light in here. And I'm actually going to erase that line, that outline circle that I made. Because remember, this is going to be the lightest part of our ball. So it should have very little graphite or pencil on there. So super light. Again, notice how I haven't used the Q-tip or the tissue paper. People start to get impatient and they start using the tissue paper and the Q-tip. All right, so I covered it, right? This is where the tissue paper will come in. The Q-tip will wait towards um, the details, right? So you grab the tissue paper, keep in mind what side you're using. You don't need a whole lot. All right, so what I do, we don't want to use our fingers, right? One of the common things that people do is start using their fingers and blend it or their hand, right? What happens is we have oils that we're constantly secreting and sweat, right? Through our fingers, through our hands, from our pores, right? And so our hands are greasy, whether we're touching something or we're not. And so the, that grease then gets transmitted onto the paper. And it kind of sometimes will make the graphite look a little brownish because the oil, because of the oil or like a yellowish brown, okay? So that's why I don't want you to use your fingers. You're going to uh, put those oils onto your paper and you're also whatever dirt or uh, dirty stuff you have on your fingers will then be transferred onto your drawing. 
And so now you grab the tissue paper or the toilet paper and you lightly rub it through and around your groin. Stay away from the hot spot. Okay. And so what this is doing is making everything blend a little better. I am adding a little bit of pressure, right? Feel free to, to rotate the paper if you need to, to get a better grip or area, right? Some people will, instead of rotating the paper, they'll like move their elbow or their hand around and make it a little more difficult on themselves. I like to just rotate the paper around, okay? So the tissue paper is used for big areas, to cover big areas. The Q-tip will be used for the little areas, okay? So use the, so what's happening? A couple things. A, we're blending. B, we're also taking away the pencil or some of the graphite that's on that paper and transferring it onto our tissue paper. So that's why you also wanna be careful how much pressure you're applying because you obviously don't wanna take a lot from the dark areas, right? Because then you're gonna have to put more down, right? So now I'm gonna go back. And right now everything looks the same. It doesn't really look like a ball that's curved and that's 3D, right? So we need to have more of those dark values. I think we have nice light values and we need to have some more medium values, right? So I'm gonna go in and put in another layer of pencil in order to make it look darker, right? So I'm adding more pressure, right? And you can already see it getting darker, right? And what we want to make sure that we don't have is that line. When you're shading, you want to go from this dark to these mediums gradually without seeing this line. Okay. So I'm going to go past that line because the medium values start up here. They don't necessarily end at that line either, by the way, the dark values. All right. <clears throat> we want them to overlap. Now be mindful, if you're going back and using the, the tissue paper or the toilet paper on top of that, what we just put, you're gonna take it away. Okay? And you're gonna have to add more again. And so now here comes the trick where I want it to fade, I want this line to fade out. And that's the hard part when it comes to shading. I'm gonna pull back on my pencil like this. So instead of holding it here, I'm gonna hold it backwards, pull it through my fingers. This will allow me to make less pre or put less pressure onto the point and help me fade out and blend out that line. See how I'm blending it? I'm fading it into the me medium values. Again, I pulled back on my pencil, so I'm not gripping at it at the bottom, All right? And then remember to continue to rotate your pencil every, I don't know, every minute or two so that it's evenly shaving down and not just getting uh, used up on one side, okay? Remind, please remember to let me know if uh, I need to slow down or if, I, if you guys need me to uh, repeat something again. All right, so Hopefully you're noticing your circle starting to look more and more like a ball. All right. And yes, it is a little harder now that we're using just the HB pencil. Okay. Be mindful though. Hope none of you have been um, cutting into your papers because you applied too much pressure. It's okay. Remember, I want you guys to, this is the practice. I want you guys to make your mistakes here so that when you have your project, you don't make the mistake on that project, okay? So it's slowly coming together, right? So 
you should be noticing how much time we're actually spending on the shading. Some people think that it should be taking like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. No, proper shading takes a long time, right? So please be patient and be mindful of what you're doing and how you're doing it. All right. Okay, I'm going to hold it, hold my pencil sideways and continue going up. Okay. All right. Pretty dark down here. Medium values. The medium values and the light values right now look very similar. So here's what we're going to do. Your eraser is also a drawing tool. Your pencil is not the only drawing tool okay, that you have available to you. It's another reason why I like to use the bigger erasers as opposed to just the little ones. So I'm going to use the eraser to also, to also um, shade. Okay, so I'm going to take the eraser. I'm going to lightly put it around the hot spot. Right, depending on how new your eraser is, will determine how white it is and how um, some of those dark sides are. If you start erasing with like a dark side, obviously this can also rub onto your paper. So you want to be aware of that. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is just lightly drag it and spread out those light values. If you go too dark, like for example, if you use this pencil and you erase with that and you go too dark, it'll make a solid line show up and then you have to blend that again, okay? So that's why I'm doing it really light so that we don't have to make or fix some of those streaks, okay, as much. But the, white, the lightest thing should be that hot spot. So that's where you should definitely be adding or using a lot of pressure. And you can use this eraser, which is smaller, and really make it come out, all right? All right, so now I have the hot spot, the light values, the medium values, and the dark values, right? We need to get rid of this line right here. So with the toilet paper, I'm just gonna lightly rub it along that edge in a circular motion like this and get rid of that line. Okay. And then if you need to go anywhere else to kind of blend it, you can. Okay. How's everyone doing? Doing okay still? All right, now we're ready for the shadow. So for the shadow, pretty dark values, medium and dark, right? Where's the darkest part of our shadow gonna be? You guys remember from the ink shading? Bottom right over here, Kong says. Anybody disagree or agree with Kong? Keep in mind the light is coming from the top, right? If the light was coming from the left, then the darkest part would be over here on the right, right? But since the light is coming from the top, the darkest part of our shadow is right underneath the actual object, right in here, okay? So remember to leave that little tiny sliver of white, really thin line between the shadow and the object, right? And so I made a nice dark line and I'm gonna add a lot of pressure on here because this is the darkest part of the shadow. And then as we go out to the sides, then it'll get have those medium values, okay? A good rule of thumb, the darkest part of the shadow for most or almost all objects is right next to the object, okay? The closest 
part of the shadow to the ob object will be the lightest. Okay. So remember to keep rotating your pencil so that you wear down the, the point of your pencil evenly. Please do not um, give up on the shading. It is hard. It can be difficult. And I know I'm probably maybe doing it a little faster. But again, keep in mind, this is not the first time I've done this. This is maybe the major for the majority of you the first time you've shaded before. So give yourself some bit of a leeway, right? I should be able to do this much better, right? Because I've been doing this for a while. So that's why it, it's a little, it's obviously easier for me to do. So give yourself some credit and some leeway when you guys are doing these skills. So again, notice how dark it is in here. And then it gets a little lighter. So I'm going to go in with the um, tissue paper in a minute to kind of blend in, have an even gradual change. All right, I'm just going to go in with the toilet paper. Just lightly put it across. Now, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. If you put too much pressure, you're going to take away a lot of that dark those dark values we put down, okay? Then go back and just add a little bit more pencil right along the bottom or the top of the shadow, I guess I should say. Okay. There's my shadow, there's the ball. Now it's time for the Q-tip, okay? There's two sides to the Q-tip. You're gonna be using both. Choose which side, obviously mine is clean. Don't grab a used one, right? Make sure there's no wax on it. One side will be for the light areas. One side will be for the dark areas. That's up to you to choose. Try not to mix them up though. Just like for the stumps, they have two sides. One side's for the light areas, that's why this one's lighter. And one side's for the darker areas, that's why this one is darker. This one doesn't have a light or dark because it's brand new, okay? So same thing with the Q-tip. So I'm gonna go over to the hot spot, and I'm just gonna blend the edge around that hot spot. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Do you guys see these little specks right here? Those I can't erase. There's a reason why those are there. I'll tell you in a minute. And then all I'm gonna do is flip it over to the other side. And I'm gonna go along the edge of my ball and just smooth out the edge. So it's nice and smooth, not a lot of pressure. Okay. There. Now it looks like a ball, right? So the Q-tip again, one side is for the light areas, one side is for the darker areas, right? And now we're gonna clean up our, our ball. So it doesn't look all splotchy along the edges, like it kind of sticks out, right? So I'm just gonna take the eraser from the pencil since it's a nice has a nice clean edge. And I'm literally just going to go along the edge and erase anything that sticks out. So I get a nice clean outline. Don't make the line or the outline of the ball nice and dark. Don't do that because it's not all gonna be dark. A lot of people will outline or trace the object they're drawing 
You don't need to do that. That's what the, that's why you're shading. The shading will do that for you if you do it properly. Right. So remember, the pencil or the graphite itself is not the only drawing tool you have available to you. You also have your eraser as a drawing tool. Um, those of you that are left-handed, like myself, this side of my hand by the end of third period, maybe today, by the end of first period, this will all be dark and filled with pencil. Those of you that are right-handed don't have to deal with that. Should feel lucky. The reason being is because I'm left-handed. When we write notes or anything, we draw or write from left to right. Okay? Everyone else gets to write like this with the right hand. People that are left-handed will drag their hand across the paper which is why this ends up being super dark, okay? All right. And now I have a nice clean edge, okay? All right, these little specks that I was telling you about earlier are coming from my table. So these little specks are little carvings inside of or onto my paper. You can kind of see here the paint went into those uh, carved areas. Those sometimes will show up on your paper if you dig hard enough. So keep that in mind. 